So I'm, I'm happy you guys all know who this individual is because that would kind of derail my presentation. She's, a, she's an organizational expert, right? Um, and in today's day and age, that's what she's known for. She comes in, she cleans stuff, organizes it, right? But even before Marie Kondo, decades ago, those same sort of underlying principles were being applied in another organizational philosophy known as 5S. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Yes. So what is 5S? Surprise. It is based on five Japanese words that start, that start with the sound S. I'm not going to say them because I don't want to offend anybody or butcher it, but there are English translations, so we're going to stick to those translations today. But essentially, it's a systematic approach to decluttering and organizing a physical workspace. And so that methodology originated in the Toyota assembly line, which we've talked about today, right? And that really became a core element in the sort of like lean manufacturing wave that uh, happened in the late 1900s. And that whole system was based around this idea of creating a tiny, a tidy, a tiny, a tidy workspace, um, storing and identifying elements um, that were most frequently used on the actual production line, and then maintaining that system over time. And there's really two uh, key factors to this, right? So earlier today, uh, Rob talked about Kaizen, and uh, that applies kind of in this 5S system, right? It's this idea of this continuous incremental change that improves a workspace over time, right? So it's this idea of seeing what works and what doesn't work and continuing to improve until you get, get where you want to get, right? You, you got to be persistent like this girl. Also me as a four-year-old, so that's great. Um, and then a second sort of overlying or overarching principle that can be applied to this visual workspace is <laughs> this idea of, yeah, as I mentioned, a visual workspace, right? So that it basically uh, is the idea that systems are more efficient if all the things that you need to get the job done are visible and easily accessible. So the main takeaway there is that these clear visual cues actually help you uh, digest information quickly and make decisions faster and more efficiently, right? And um, as we've kind of reiterated through all the presentations today, I mean, this whole 5S methodology, it just eliminates waste and improves efficiency. So that's what we're going to see today. So what are the 5S's? Probably wondering. Let's talk about that. <laughs> so the first S is sort. Right. Um, so the idea here is to get rid of any waste or any sort of unnecessary materials within a workspace. So if Marie Kondo were organizing your closet, she would pull out your burnt umber shorts and ask you, <laughs> what would she ask you, Rob? How much do you love these? Does this spark, spark joy? joy. <laughs> she would ask you, does this spark joy? So. In the production line, this is kind of what's happening, right? Like you take an element and you look at it and you ask, does this spark value? Is this, is this valuable to our process, right? So that's the first step. The second step is to set it in order. So uh, it can kind of be summarized into this really simple uh, phrase, there's a place for everything and everything in its place. And you, we can take that a step further in that if uh, on the production line, the tools are arranged according to their use. And they're also arranged according to when they are being used. So if there's five tools that you're trying to do, you would want to put them in the order that they're being done as you move through that assembly line, right? Okay, so step number three. Shy. Jazz hands. Yeah. So um, this step is. Uh, in a physical workspace would relate to maintaining the sort of order that you've established, right? And cleaning your workspace regularly. So if you set up your desk and it's efficiently organized, right? You want to dust it every day. <laughs> Don't want that to accumulate. 
Um, so that's how it would apply to like a physical workspace. If you notice that um, the walls are need some repair, the carpet needs repair, you would be pretty pragmatic in getting those things done. And then step number four is standardize. So once everything is clean and it's in its place, that becomes a standard and it's meant to be repeated and maintained every day. Uh, you might even have in a physical production line like a, an actual sort of benchmark image of this is what we're trying to attain every day, right? So that anyone new that comes in also understands what has what is the standard that has been set for that workspace. Okay, step number five, the last S. This is sustain. So uh, this idea of uh, cleaning, organizing, maintaining a workspace becomes a lifestyle, right? So you sustain those positive changes and anyone who doesn't know, you train them and you continue to communicate until that becomes their lifestyle, right? So um, there's a lot of different ways we can apply this. I think as a team, you can apply it to uh, our, our workspace, which could be like our design files or how we organize our documents. But I think uh, just for the sake of discussion, we're, we're going to talk about how can we apply some of these principles to UI, right, as designers. So let's get into it. <laughs> just, I have a bunch of dog gifts coming up because... I needed to overcompensate for what, <laughs> for the content. So, uh, <laughs> so step number one was sort, right? This is, uh, you have to get rid of unnecessary things, right? So designs should not contain information that is irrelevant or rarely needed. You know, just in a regular instance, we've all heard stories that drag on way too long because there are details that are totally irrelevant to that story that people say, right? So if we think of an interface as a similar sort of experience, we don't want those details to muddy what they're trying to do. Let's be succinct and clear, right? Um, every extra piece of information that you have takes away from the important pieces that people need to make decisions, right? So that's another sort of principle we can apply. Um, and then the second point that I have here is every UI element should bring value. So yesterday I talked about it, but I've been working on a project where I often have to justify my design decision. So I get asked, why does, is this placed here? Or why is this a CTA, not a link? You know, like, so things like that have helped me to see that every design decision that I make, I should know why I'm making it, right? Uh, so it shouldn't just be a superfluous sort of thing, right? So uh, that also might help us to grow as designers, uh, help us to keep our design succinct and clear, right? So step number two in this instance. <laughs> Set in order. <laughs> so how can we apply this? Uh, in a very, just, uh, you know, you guys can probably think in a UI, we can introduce some visual hierarchy that, that makes it easier to organize content in a way that um, helps the user make decisions faster, right, and easier. Um, but then the second thing that I have here is tasks done in conjunction with a piece of information should be placed near each other. A good example of this, I do this all the time. I have a billion tabs open and sometimes I need to access piece of content from one tab to another tab, so I'll move that tab over so they're next to each other, right? So you can like switch between the two. So that same sort of thing uh, we can apply to our designs. We, if we know what pieces of information a user needs to make a decision, well, let's, let's put them near each other, right? So that's also part of this sort of setting in order principle. Doing stuff like that reduces cognitive load and um, these are all things we've probably heard before, right? Okay, step number three. <laughs> Just <hit. laughs> Okay, so this was maintain order by routinely checking and cleaning your workspace. That was how it related in a physical workspace, right? <laughs> but if you think about, um, 
in a UI, like you can look at each page as a task that the user is trying to accomplish or a series of tasks. And so you can ask yourself, are there things on this screen that are distracting? You know, like how can I um, maintain this particular area to the task that needs to be done? Um, and then another thing is let's make it aesthetically pleasing also, right? I mean, um, ugly things are distracting, right? That's just the the fact of the matter, like we can walk into a house and see a beautiful carpet, but if there's this big ugly stain on it, like that's all we look at, right? So our designs should shine, right? From, from that perspective. Okay, number four. How am I doing with my gift game? Yeah. Four for four, okay. So uh, this one is standardized, right? Again, once you find something that works, keep doing it, right? So um, similar UI elements should be placed in the same place. We think about this all the time with um, things like buttons, CTAs, like are they always, uh, whatever that actionable task is, is it always in the same place for the user to start, start making these sort of mental connections? Um, another thing is use consistent language throughout your, your interface, right? So um, an interface should speak the user's language and it, that should be consistent throughout the experience. I think uh, one of the hard things working on certain technical projects, we might not always understand that language and so we often change it up, you know, because we're confused, but it's important to keep it consistent based on the user and, and uh, what they know to be that specific language. Um, and then the last thing I have here is use design guidelines. So for visual design, you might want to create a design system um, so that elements can be easily reproduced. Um, that way, if you're working with another team member or, um, or you get a new request to make a new page, you know, creating these things becomes a lot easier. So less waste, more efficiency, you can kind of see how those things go together. It's the last. Last slide, guys. Last gift slide. <laughs> okay, when it works, just copy it, right? So you want to sustain, <laughs> sustain, <laughs> uh, sustain the progress that you've made up into a point. So. Um, it, the one thing I have up here is to iterate. You know, a lot of times we um, get asked to create a design, but if you have the opportunity to continue simplifying that design, we should as designers. It shouldn't be just an end all, right? Um, and then also, when you are making those iter iterative changes, we can keep in mind what's already been developed, right? So um, when we're working with the development team, we don't want to introduce something that uh, is going to set them back or inc include more effort if it can be done with sort of existing existing UI, right? So that's some a consideration that we can keep in mind. So how does all of this help us as designers? Uh, well, one thing is it helps justify our design decisions better, as I mentioned, right? So as a UX designer, we want to bring value to a team, so we should be ready to explain our decisions, right? If you're on a dev team, that happens pretty often. Someone reviews your code, you know, you might need to speak for why you decide to do something a certain way. Design is not so subjective that we can't do that, right? So we should be prepared to answer to those things, not just internally within our team, but to a developer, to our stakeholders, so that involves some communication there. The second thing is it helps create a better user experience, right? We have these sort of tried and tested visual methods that we know help a user get that job done quickly, right? We have these visual sort of um, principles. So just keep using it. Don't recreate the wheel. You know, you, we know what, what helps a user digest information faster. And then the last thing is it can be reproduced quickly. So organizing our design in that particular way helps us to accommodate new requests from a stakeholder. We can accommodate those requests faster. Or if you're bringing on another designer, it's easier for them to get up to speed, right? So more efficiency, less waste, again. Yeah. Yeah.